Howdy folks, this is Travis once again with the Klopp & Cal Company and Elston Equine Solutions. And today's topic is going to be concerning the ledge for spurs, or what some people call a boot shelf. Now what am I talking about specifically? Well, what I'm talking about specifically is a place to be able to rest your spurs on a pair of boots so that the spur doesn't move. So what I'm talking about is this area right here. Okay, this would be considered a spur ledge or some people call a spur shelf. Okay, and you can see you put your spurs right there and it just rests right on top of this area right here of the rider's booty heel. And that's all we're talking about today. All right, folks, so a lot of times you go to a boot barn or you go down to a different boot uh, manufacturers that just got a plethora of boots on uh, the shelves and stuff a lot of them are fashionable boots now this is a fashionable boot from the 80s or 90s ostrich you know they're, they've got the cockroach killers up front but the point i'm getting to most of them don't have a spur uh, ledge on the back you can see it's a straight drop off i can take my pin i don't hit nothing uh, that would be a problem when you're riding spurs more than likely. Now I know some folks like to have spurs down here on the bottom, which I'm going to show you now on this other pair of boots. Okay, so some folks out there don't uh, need spur ledges. And what they'll do is they'll just take the, the, the spur band and place it right below where the leather piece of the boot meets the boot heel. And that's fine if that's uh, what you like to do more power to you. I'm just not one of them types of people. I like to have a spur ledge. The reason I like to have a spur ledge slash shelf is I've always found if I don't have one and I like my heel, my spurs right above the heel, has a tendency while I'm riding, even though I probably have this tightened up as much as I can around my ankle, it'll start sliding down, sliding down, sliding down, and next thing you know, it's popping off. Okay, that doesn't do you no good. Uh, so I like to have a spur shelf right on top to keep that from happening. I mean, it's real easy. It just goes right off, and I've seen that happen a lot. So that's what we're going to talk about right now is the prevention of uh, spur ledge and stuff. And also, if you don't have a spur ledge on your boot, we're going to show you how to make one in this video. So if I pick up a, this pair of RCs right here, you'll see... If I take my pin, look how much it covers. That's pretty much a half an inch of, a, of a, a ledge right here for the spur to be able to rest on. I mean, the spur's not gonna come down, and it's not gonna fall off the hill because it's gonna rest on this big, nice shelf. Now, why they call it a ledge or a shelf? Well, pretty common sense. You got a big ledge right here, and then, or a shelf, and then you got the drop off of the boot heel right there. So when you put on a pair of uh, hooks, on your boots and I'll slide it down the stove pipes here you can see it rests very very comfortably on top of this ledge and I still have a little bit sticking out that's what the preferred area that you want is this sticking out past the band of the spur Rests on there nice and neat, as you can see in the video. And that really helps for it from coming down off the boot hill. And that's all it's designed for. Nice and easy pleasy. Now, different boots come in different sizes of spur ledges. You'll see on this one, it's a lot smaller. Okay, I'll place my pin right there. It's a lot smaller of a ledge right here to keep the, the spurs in place. Uh, so is that something you got to take a look at as a rider, as a horseman or horse lady, you know, where you want your spurs to stay at. So I'm just sharing that with you. Now, you probably asked or thinking, okay, well, I've got a lot of pair of boots. What can I do to be able to put a spur ledge on a pair of boots that doesn't have them? Well, I have a solution for you, folks. So if you look... Well, there's another pair real quick with the spur ledge. You can see it's on there. I really like them. All my running boots have them. 
So my packer boots right here, I was a long time ago, I was uh, teaching horsemanship for five years as a rodeo coach for the Air Force Academy rodeo team. And I was watching the rough stock uh, riders and uh, shoot this a while back. And I noticed his uh, cowboy boots had a piece of leather on the back right here. And uh, I looked down and I said, man, can I take a picture of that? He goes, yes, sure, you sure can. And I've been doing this uh, tip and technique ever since then on a pair of boots I like that doesn't have a spur ledge. So all you're going to do is take a piece of leather and add it to the boot heel and wrap it all around to the other side. And then when you put your uh, set of hooks on there, you can tell it just rests right on top of it, okay? And I'm just using this demonstration. Obviously, this set of hooks be on this other uh, boot. But I just wanted to show you, I still have a spur ledge there. So I'm up in the mountains uh, packing in because a lot of times you're dismounted, uh, walking down hills, up mountains and so forth. You're not riding the horses to save their strength. Uh, a lot of times uh, I'll use packer boots. The rest of the time I just use normal riding boots. But uh, we're going to show you on the video how to go ahead and make this spur shelf and ledge. So if you like this presentation, like this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, very useful material. And uh, boy, I sure like all the comments and feedbacks we get from you folks. And I appreciate everything you do. Uh, what we're going to show you next is how to make a spur ledge if you don't have one on a pair of your cowboy boots. That is coming next. <music> Right, folks well we're moving on to the next step uh step one obviously was uh cut this off uh, the length and all i did that was all i did was measure from uh, this location all the way around following the top of the boot heel all the way around to the other side to make sure it matched and then i just cut it off the old uh you see right there cut off an old piece of split reins i wasn't using this was actually excess from a new set of reins split reins that were too long for me so that was step one. Step two. All right, so I'm over here at the drill press. You could probably use a handheld drill. I'm just going to use uh, the drill press because I already got a small bit in there that I can use. And something what I'm going to do is start here. I'm going to go low, alternate a uh, finger's distance from that hole, and go high up here. And then I'm going to put my finger there, and then alternate all the way down this piece of leather. That's what I'm doing now. Okay, so only high, I'm gonna get one finger's distance away, and then I'm gonna bring it down. So pedal here. And then I'm gonna alternate to the other one side. So go high on this one. Okay, so you probably can't see the holes that well, but I have a high hole here, one finger distance, a low hole, and then I got another finger, and then a high hole. Next one, I'm gonna go low, and just keep on going with the pattern. And I'm just eyeballing it, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you wanna be perfect, go ahead. Of course, save the other one with the finger. finger distance go high and I'm just going to keep on going with this process easier than making flapjacks I tell you Take my leather around so make a little 
bit easier for myself and my fingers. I was running out of the leather room. One more in. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, you can see the holes are alternating on this piece of leather, which uh, once again is just a piece of rain that I cut off. It was uh, too long of a set of split rain, so I cut them off. Now I'm just recycling. Cowboys recycle a lot of stuff when I never know what they're going to use it for, so they save it and then probably use it for uh, something else later on down the road, kind of like what we're doing. Savvy? Two was what I just did drill the holes in and then step three is going to be the nail on uh, the piece of leather making uh, a spur rest and that's what we're going to do right now so I'm just going to show you this now yes these are cockroach killers uh, they're older boots these were my dad's he's my biological dad he uh, passed away a long time ago just had the boots sitting around so I figured heck might as well show you uh, how to do this all right, so next step I'm going to do, which basically is step three, is I'm going to angle this piece of leather down right here. You can see I've already done it right here. Okay, I angled the leather down. I don't know if you can see that, but I angled it so it points down a little bit skinnier towards uh, the beginning of the boot heel. Uh, that way if brush hits, it doesn't hit a big clog, it'll just glance up. Okay, so that's the reason why I did that. And you can get a, one of these knives like this. That used to cause ramp or pocket knife, whatever you want to do, and it's just used to uh, skim the leather. So I'm going to go to the side I want. I'm going to do the, the smooth side, not this side, but smooth side. I'm going to take my knife right here, and I was going to do is start from drawing it away from me, just like such. Okay, you can see it's curling up the leather, and now I'm going to start in the back and just. Go ahead and you're going to say, well, Travis, it's a little bit of discolorization there. Well, yeah, but once you put boot polish on and everything else, it's all going to blend in the same color. Or you can go get some leather dye and make the same thing happen. Okay, I'm looking there. It's getting a little bit skinnier. I really wish this blade was... Uh, right-handed and I kind of draw it this way away from me and clean up this side now I'm going to go to the other side do the same thing cut away from myself good and I'm letting the tool do itself I'm not putting no pressure down I gotta clean up chunks of leather I just let it glide away Just like you're shaving a, a stick or whittling on a stick. Okay, once I get it kind of where I want it, I want a little bit more. It's not skinny enough yet. You can see it's kind of starting to ramp. Okay, I like that on both sides. All right, so you can see right there, it's uh, really angled. It's kind of ramped out. Uh, so I really like that. That's about as much as I wanted to go. So that way it doesn't look uh, very ridiculous being ramped. And uh, yeah, that's what I like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to place it on the boot. So what I like to do, place it on the boot, I'm just going to take this end. And I'm going to match it right to the top of this location right here on the boot. And since I've already measured what the cut is, I'm not worried about it all the way around. I just want to tack it on, make sure it stays in place. So I'm just using number 18 gauge, three quarter inch nails. Uh, you can buy these hardware stores, they're just laying around. And uh, you can see that it goes way past the leather and I got that much going into the boot heel right here. So I think it's going to work out great. All right. Put my nail in the pre-drilled hole already. I didn't pre-drill the boot heel because I didn't feel like I needed to. I'm just going to take my hammer and 
voila, pull it up in there. Okay, just like this. Nice and easy. Find my other pre drilled holes. Make sure it lines up for my spur rest. Now you can see I went high, low. I'm gonna go high. Kind of like a uniformity uh, on what I'm doing here. And I'm just gonna keep on doing that all the way around the boot. I'm going to go to the heel because I want to do is I don't want to bubble on this piece of leather. So I'm going to go from left to right all the way across. I'm not going to go. For, so what I'm saying is I'm not going to go from here to here. I want to make sure that I'm flattening it and pushing it all the piece of leather all the way forward. That way it doesn't create no bubble space. Anywhere on the spur rest. Look, we're getting there. Okay, so I have it on here. Now you can see there's basically a spur shelf here. And if you can see in the video, that's a, what you've just extended on, okay? Probably about a quarter of an inch because that piece of leather going all the way around that now you can put a set of spurs on and you're not worried about them dropping off the hill if you like this way. Uh, I personally like to, like this. I don't like them hitting the ground down here. Some cowboys, cowgirls do. Hey, that's you. That floats your boat. Go with it. Uh, myself, I like to have a spur... Uh, Bench, as some people call them, a ledge, as some people call them, or a rest, other people call them. It all means the same thing, it adds up to being the same thing. So that's your uh, field expedient way of making a spur ledge there. And uh, you can see I got them on both sides. And that's how you make them. So if your boots don't come with them, yeah, so, be it. so be it. Make your own. So now you have the knowledge, and knowledge is power. Take care, sign off, adios. Thank mm -hmm. you.